spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Praise Jesus. The Lord. Oh, my, my, my. Second Timothy, the third chapter. Second Timothy, the third chapter. Sixteenth verse. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Second Timothy three and sixteen. Come on. The Bible says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God all right. and is profitable for doctrine. Yeah. For reproof. Uh -huh. For correction. Yeah. For instruction yeah. in righteousness. That's right. That the man of God may be perfect. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The last couple of weeks we've been preaching and going along the lines of Romans 8 and 28 that says this, For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Now, there are some people today that believe that the New Testament is not actually what 2 Timothy is talking about. They say that at the time that Timothy, that this was written to Timothy, that the time that the book of Timothy was written by the Apostle Paul, yeah. the only scripture they had was the Torah and the, some of the letters you know, from the prophets, yeah. the Old Testament as it is. So they say that, and I had one man go so far to tell me, Brother Dave, he said, the New Testament is only commentary for the Old Testament, which is really the inspired Scripture. Oh, my, my, my. Like Brother Slee said this morning, some people swallow anything. Amen? That's it. I realized at the time when he said all Scripture, I realized that they had the Old Testament. Oh, but I realize that the Word of God is always the same today, yesterday, and forever. And that the promises in the book ain't just for them from yesterday, but they're, they're, they're for those today and those on down the line. Amen. I realize that our God had enough foreknowledge to know that in the year 2011, we wouldn't just have the Old Testament Scripture, but we'd have the New Testament Scripture as well. Amen? And when He said all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, that's not just talking about what Moses pinned down. That's not just talking about what Isaiah wrote down, or Jeremiah wrote down, or Ezekiel wrote down, but it is talking about the apostles that got themselves some paper and a pen and begin to write down the things that Jesus said as the Holy Spirit moved upon the apostles and the disciples and upon the servants of God as they begin to write down what we have for Scripture today. Amen. 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 I hope that makes it plain enough. Yes, sir. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Amen. Come on. And is profitable. Yeah. Did you hear that? Yes, sir. It's profitable. For you, Brother Sleeves, today. Come on. This is not just some book that was written to some people thousands of years ago and it's just history and it doesn't have anything to do with us. Oh, no, 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 no. From Genesis to Revelation, this book has been preserved for thousands of years. The Word of God has been preserved for thousands of yeah. years for you. That's it, brother. Back for you. Back Amen. Back. Now, I like what Brother Sleeves said this morning. Not just 400. Because all this is is the English, yeah. uh, the English translation of that which has existed for thousands of years. Yeah. Amen. Come on, say it. It is inspired of God, uh -huh. and it is profitable for you. Right. It would profit you. Come on. If you was to open up the Word of God and read it. That's right. Amen. Come on. What good would it do you today if I wrote you a letter yeah. and I sent it to you in an envelope? And all you did was just sit around yes, looking at that envelope thinking, well, you know, oh, this is this is really good. Somebody wrote this. Yeah. You gotta open it up and read the letter, amen. Mm -hmm. For it to do you any good. Hallelujah. That's right. Someone can send you a notification that somebody, one of your rich relatives died. Anybody here got any rich relatives? Mm -hmm. If I do, they wouldn't leave me nothing when they died, amen. All right. I don't have any that I know of. Okay. But what good would it do you if somebody had left you a fortune? 
and the lawyer searched, and finally they got a hold of Sister Vonnie's address. Yeah. And they sent her a letter in the mail. Come on. And she got it, and she thought, well, you know, that's a nice looking envelope. Probably something inside of it. And I'm just going to lay it down here, and I ain't going. Come on. Amen. Or maybe she thought his junk man wrote return to sender on it and had somebody take it and send it back. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Say it. They're trying to get a hold of you to tell you that you got a fortune. Amen. Come on. Amen. Oh, if you open up the letter that he wrote. Amen. Hallelujah. There are treasures to be found that you won't find them unless you open the book. That's it, brother. Unless you open up the envelope. Come on. Unless you open up the letter and begin to read it. On, the McCamey's son of song, I don't know if they wrote it or not. I found an old love letter that was written just for me. All right. Woo! Hallelujah! I found, oh, I'm wound up this morning. I don't know. I may be too wound up to preach. I found an old love letter that was written just for me this morning. Amen. It was written just for you. That's right. This is a personal thing. Do you remember how you used to feel when you got a love letter from that, you know, the love of your life and they'd write you a little note, you know? Amen. And you'd open it up, or maybe they sent you some flowers, or maybe they just bought you a special present, or maybe it's just a little note on your pillow that said, I love you very, very much. And you got warm all over. Come on. Open up the letter. Amen. Amen. Open up the letter. Come on. Maybe it helped. Melt some of that old frozen heart you got. Amen? Hallelujah. Maybe it'll help you. I don't feel no love. Open up the book. Right. It's full of love. Amen? Amen. <laughs> My goodness, I tell you what. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to get somebody to come in and sub for me while I pass out. Go ahead, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God yeah. and it's profitable. Right. It's profitable for doctrine. Yes. For reproof. Come on. Oh, for correction. Yes, sir. Amen? For instruction in righteousness, right. that the man of God, Come on. Now you put in there woman too, because neither male nor female in Christ, right. that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Yeah. That's how I know this morning that Romans 8 and 28 was just not written to a church in those days. That Romans 8 and 28 applies to my life today if I will allow it to. If I will put my faith in God, He's the same God today that He's always been. Yes, and all things will still work together for my good. Hallelujah. If I love the Lord and I'm called according to His purpose, and I give thanks in all things, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning me, no matter if I understand it or if I don't like it or if, it's, if I think it's bad or I think it's good, all things work together for my good because that's a promise from God. Yes, sir. Preach and you on. see, Brother Sleece might promise me. He might tell me, you know, brother... He might say, Pastor Billy, I'm going to take you out that China joint Monday. All right. And he promised me. But something happened. Yeah. And he wasn't able to do it. All right. Amen. Come on. See, man can make you promises. Right. And sometimes we break them. Right. How many times have you heard some of these two people decide they're going to get married? They pledge their love to get to each other. And then one of them says to the other, you know what? I ain't going to go through with this. So they break their promise. Come on. Oh, how many times? I think now, what is it? More than 50% yeah. of the times that they stand in front of the preacher and say, till death do us part, that don't, right. it don't last quite that long. Amen? So the promise that they made, they break. Yeah. But I've got good news for you this morning. Right. The promises that we find in the Word of God right. are yea, amen, and nay. Amen. You know what that means? Yes amen. and amen. 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 When he says it, that's that's it. Seals. He doesn't change. He seals it, Brother David said. He don't change it, but God will not break His promises right. to you. Amen. That's why I know today that no matter what the circumstance, I can get at the table, amen, and begin to feed them on the promises of God and realize that God is not a man that He should lie. That God is not one that's going to break His promise. Oh, it may take longer than I think it's going to take. It may take some enduring. It may take some waiting. But thank God there's a promise for that too. They that wait upon the Lord Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. Come Amen. On, That's good for you. The promises of God are for you. Amen. They weren't just written for Abraham. That's right. They were written for you. That's right. 
They weren't just written for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They were written for Sleece, Rodney, and David. Come on. Amen. Come on. We always talk about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah, He was. But He's also the God of Billy, Amen, and Sleece, and Rodney, and, and Brother David, and everybody in this place. He's, he's our God too. Amen. Amen. We ain't just talking about Him. Our son, you know, well, you know, they had a God. No, He's my God. Amen. Amen. He's your God. Yes, if you'll let Him be. Right. Amen. If you'll let Him be, He's your God. Amen. So we've been reading about Romans 8 and 28, and I told you we were going to talk about the promises of God. <clears throat> Here it is, 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. Now I'm going to hit these real fast. All right. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20 says, For all the promises of God in Him are yea, and in Him, Amen. 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 Unto the glory of God by us. Now a while ago I misquoted it. I said the promises of God are yea and nay. <laughs> But you know what? When God says no, He means no too. Amen? Amen. Amen. So maybe I didn't mess up so bad and the Lord just slipped that in there. See, God always answers. Yes, sir. In three, one of three ways. Yes, no, or wait. Oh. Amen? That's true. You always get an answer to your prayer. He answers every one of them. All right. We don't like to wait. We don't like no. We like to hear that. Yay, Lord. Yay. Yes, Lord. Put it on me. Amen? Amen. Yeah. <coughs> And not just the promise, but all of the promises of God. You see, it says here that uh, the promises of God in Him are yea, and in Him are amen. That means it's sealed. That means it's finished. That means it's, it's true. It cannot be changed. The promises that we find in the Word of God today cannot be changed. Right. Romans 15, beginning in the 8th verse. Romans 15 and 8 says, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Did you hear that? Yes, sir. If all you had was the Old Testament today, the only thing you would have is the promises and not the fulfillment of it. Yeah. If all you had was the Scripture that said that Isaiah said a virgin shall, con shall be with child, she shall conceive. Yeah. Amen. And she shall bring forth a child. This shall be a sign of you. She shall bring forth a child. Come on. If all you had was the prophet saying his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God. Amen. Everlasting Father. Then you might still be looking for Him. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Because it ain't complete. Mm -hmm. Come on, say it. The Old Testament is not complete by itself. Right. It promises things that are going to happen. And then the New Testament shows us how many of those things were fulfilled. Yeah. Right, yeah. You wouldn't know if God ever made good on those promises. Yeah. You would still be like some of the, not just Jewish people, but other people that still are looking for Him to come. Right. Well, a virgin's going to have a bad... wonder when that's going to happen. Oh, you need to read the New Testament, son. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You need to read the New Testament because the Bible talks about a star and not in Bethlehem in a little stable where a virgin, hallelujah, and her husband Joseph went there and they had a baby, amen, and the shepherds came and worshipped him and the wise men from afar brought him gifts. Isaiah's prophecy has been fulfilled. See, God promised them all the way from Genesis all the way to Malachi. God promised them He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Yeah. He's coming. Amen. And then we and if that's all we had, um, we would still think, well, he's still coming. Right. Oh, but we can turn over there. Come on. And we can talk, we can read over there how Matthew tells us yeah. about a virgin by the name of Mary who was overshadowed by 